What's up, Active Lifers? Welcome back to the Active Life Podcast. I'm Dr. Sean Pastuch. I'm your host. And today's guests are Austin Maliolo and Gary Gaines of CrossFit Home Office. Today, we had a fun conversation that was hard hitting, where we talked about all different topics around CrossFit, beginning with should you affiliate, should you keep your affiliate, and ending with can affiliate owners, coaches, and people who are attending CrossFit gyms still trust CrossFit? I promise you, I asked them difficult questions that required them to dig deep and provide real answers. And in some cases, the answers that you'll hear from them are answers that you probably heard somewhere else. In those cases, I assure you, they got the follow-up question that you wanted the other person to ask if you've heard them interviewed before. And on this podcast, they didn't get the opportunity to not answer them. And frankly, to their credit, they didn't try to avoid answering those questions. I'm not going to spend a lot more time in this intro. This is a podcast that if you are interested at all in CrossFit, the CrossFit landscape, CrossFit affiliates, it's a podcast that you want to listen to. Let's get to it. We believe that the healthcare clinic of the future is the gym. Everybody starts with the best case scenario in mind. Never sell anything to anybody who is not in the market for what you have. The only reason we work out is to create the opportunity to recover. And the healthcare provider of the future is the coach. And this is why you guys need to get paid well, because what you're doing is really, really hard work. All right, Gary Gaines, Austin Maliola, welcome to the Active Life Podcast. Great to be here, Sean. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah good it's to be here. Pleasure. Gary, where are you in the world? I am in Westchester, New York, so about 15 miles north of Manhattan. Wow, we could get we could get lunch just we could, we're, we're, we're on nice. We could have done this in person, Sean. We could have. We should have. I'm yeah. in Long Beach. Next time. Right? Next time. Yeah, that's right. All right. So I want to jump right into it with you guys. My first question to you is when I was a CrossFit affiliate owner and I owned seven, uh, three CrossFit affiliates over three different locations in seven years. And one of the things that was always something that I never understood was why do some affiliates pay $500 and other affiliates pay $3,000? And I don't even know if you've raised the rates. I haven't owned an affiliate in a while. Yeah. Um, I always felt like that was something that perhaps taught affiliate owners, myself included, I made this mistake. Uh, the lesson that there isn't a value in raising people's rates and keeping things even yeah. because CrossFit, the mothership, isn't even doing it. So if somebody joined your gym in 2011 and in 2017, inflation has made it so that they're not even profitable anymore. Yeah. You got to keep them where they're at. And I'm, I'm curious as to your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think um, in terms of license fee, I mean, exactly what you said, that's accurate. There, there are some gyms that are at 500, some are at 1500, some are at 2000, some are at 3000. All of that pricing is based on when you uh, became an affiliate, right? Um, and it was Greg's driving guiding principle that regardless of when you join, your affiliate fee would never be raised or lowered because his model, um, for lack of a better way of saying it, was was set it and, and, and basically forget it, right? Um, and, and that was under the spirit of entrepreneurialism, allowing you to operate and, and um, create an experience that's unique to yourself. Um, and, uh, and so in normal business, right, you know, Sean, that that's not typically the case as cost of business goes up. So does, so does the cost of the product. Um, and so that's something we're evaluating. Before we even discuss uh, or, or make um, a plan to increase affiliate fees, we felt like we needed to build equity with the community again uh, and really gain trust. And we're doing that through providing a lot of value add um, and, um, and resources that help gyms operate uh, effectively. Um, and so, you know, although we understand that uh, there is a need to take a look at the affiliate license fee, it's not something that we're doing in the near future. Um, but in terms of there being different prices in the ecosystem, it's because of the time that an affiliate uh, came into the portfolio. So our grandfathered prices, our earliest affiliates, our 10, 11, 12 year affiliates are paying 500. Um, and it was Greg's uh, policy not to, not to touch those. So we're honoring that. Um, but on a parallel path, trying to build equity um, and trust within the community. Uh, so they see value in us as um, you know, their licensor. So the first thing I want to say to that, Gary, is there are a lot of things that I want to discuss with you today 
Yeah. I am in full lockstep with you. You're yeah. adding value to the to the affiliate community right now. And I believe yeah. that, that should earn trust. I think that yeah. you are doing, you know, adding things like cap. I know it costs money. I think it's a very reasonable price. The yep. affiliate playbook, I think, is a very smart thing. I think the way you guys did it is great. And for what people are paying for affiliates, I don't think that everybody necessarily understands the value of something like that. And I do yep. want to get into having conversations around that. Sure. Before before I get to that. A word that you threw around there that's been thrown around a lot lately in a bunch of circles is equity. And I'm curious as to how you are describing it. Is it equity of opportunity? Is it equity of outcome? When when CrossFit talks about equity, what does it mean? Yeah. Yeah. So so the way I talk about it, and I'll I'll give you kind of a a comp that I use internally, um, it's it's equity to, to have these kind of polarizing conversations with affiliates. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, a community that smells um, you know, smells BS from a mile away, right? Um, they also challenge everything you do where you are charging prices um, and things that you aren't charging. They, 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 they will sometimes um, call out being commercialized or you commoditizing the brand. So you have to be very, very careful on how you roll these things out. Myself, um, not being an affiliate owner, uh, I don't have the equity to go into an affiliate and start talking to them um, about how they operate. Right, because I've never operated in an affiliate. And I know that. So I've surrounded myself with people who have SWAT equity in the community, awesome Aliolas, Daniel Chaffees, all of these individuals that have been affiliate owners um, in multi unit locations for a significant amount of time. And so if we're going to look at raising a fee that has been the standard for 15 years, that's the last time that it was raised, we need to build that trust. Um, and so I'm using equity in that sense. We need to continue to give them value without raising their fee. Um, and absorbing the expense internally, showing them that we are committed to creating an environment where they can operate more effectively, achieve profitability quicker, and do it more consistently. So if I'm to understand correctly, I just want to make sure that I did. Yeah. When you're describing equity from CrossFit, what you're effectively saying is trust. Trust. Right? So, so, so yeah. it's we want, to, we want to increase equity of, of people who are showing up. You're saying we yeah. want to improve the trust that CrossFit has in all these different marketplaces. Right. right. Okay. I think that's a reasonable, I think it's a reasonable thing to do. I do think it's a little bit confusing because I think that people use the word differently in a bunch of different, you know, some places it's everybody gets something. Some places it's everyone has a chance. So yeah. And, 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 and respectfully, um, you're looking at objectively, right. But, but you also have to subjectively look at this. Mm -hmm. When we came into this business, there was a lot of disruption. The last thing we wanted to do was go and raise something that hadn't been touched for 15 years, yeah. right? Re- regardless of where you fell um, on, on the side of the aisle for what happened two years ago, um, everybody was watching how the new leadership team was going to come in and, and, and take control. And, and so it was a philosophical decision for us to not disrupt much, especially the, the license fee, which had been a standard for so long. Mm-hmm. And looking at what it meant to be a CrossFit affiliate, you ask 10 different affiliate owners, you'd get 10 different answers. And so before I even can justify talking about increasing the license fee, I need there to be 10 of the same answers on what it means to be a CrossFit affiliate. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, until I, if I, if I flipped it around and asked you active life, you go into an affiliate, what does active life provide for you? I, I, I would assume that you'd get consistent answers, right? So you have a. I think, st- I think I think as much as we would like to get consistent answers, we would right. get similar answers. Yeah. Right, right, Sim- similar, right? But they'd mm-hmm. be they'd be consistent and similar in tone, mm-hmm. right? We we weren't there, mm-hmm. right? And so we we had to get this baseline before we could start having. So so I want I want to make sure that I I give I leave no cards held to my chest. Sure, I think yeah, that yeah. what you're doing is smart. And I think yeah. that um, changing the affiliate fees on day one would have been a catastrophic mistake. Right. So I, I'm not disagreeing with you on that at all. My question is just whether whether it sets a precedent for gym owners to not raise rates on their members, which can be catastrophic right. for their business. So right. now, mo- mo- moving to that, you mentioned that the goals of CrossFit are to allow 10 different gym owners to have similar answers to the same question before you start making any fundamental changes to what Mm -hmm. the thing is. I think that's reasonable. Um, I think that affiliate owners for better or for worse will hear that and fear that you're trying to move them to a franchise model, 
which yeah. they would say they don't want to be in. Sure. And, uh, there's, I think there's a reason why franchises have a huge upfront cost and are expected yeah. to turn a lot of profit. So I mm-hmm. think that there's a bit of blindness when that, when that sentiment comes out, mm-hmm. but I would love to hear your thoughts around the consistency that you're looking for in a group of such rugged individuals. So when you, well, so just so I'm clear, when you say consistency, what are, what are you referring to? If 10 people said to you, the CrossFit affiliate ownership is the same, it's that that's like, they would give you a, it's a similar experience, yeah. the same experience, whatever. Yeah. The way I interpreted that was you can expect something similar, no matter which CrossFit gym you go to. Now I could yeah. be wrong in what no, I described. Yeah. So, so, so maybe I wasn't clear in how I communicated the value that they get from being a CrossFit affiliate as it relates to paying the license fee to home office. Got it. What do we provide as a business partner? The day CrossFit transitions uh, to a franchise, uh, we are no longer CrossFit. That will never happen. Understood. That's yeah. That clears it up. I appreciate yeah. it. And, yeah. And no, 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 no problem. Yeah. And I'm very passionate about that. Um, we, we are all here because of the magic that those affiliates provide. Mm-hmm. I have been going to a gym from 2008. It is my outlet. Um, it has changed my life like it has for so many other people that will never, ever be jeopardized. I, I think everybody can respect that. Even yeah. people who maybe are trepidatious around corporatizing right. changes and things like right. that. But I, I think it's very reasonable that everybody should expect the same experience from home office yep. be- before home office changes anything. Right. Along those lines, you talked about getting gyms to more profitability more quickly. Yep. And I'm curious, do I know you have a robust data department. Do you know what the average affiliate is earning top line revenue on an, on an annual? <laughs> robust data department. I, I laugh because um, uh, we, we really don't. Uh, okay. And you don't you know, have a, ro- a robust data department, or you don't have the numbers on that. We we don't have a robust da- data department. Got so um, you, you know, in order for um, well, yeah. Let me let me back up. So so similar to to Greg's philosophy, you know. The, CrossFit really didn't want anything to do with the operating uh, model, right? And so um, in order for us to access that data, you need to be uh, either tied in with a third party and or directly with the affiliate. Um, and so we, we don't have um, data that we can leverage internally uh, that help guide us. We do leverage 2Brain um, you know, uh, and, and some of the partners that we have uh, that provide gym software that have given us an indication uh, on mm-hmm. our, where gyms are from a profitability standpoint. But to my point earlier, we've got probably on staff, Austin, keep me honest, 300 to 350 um, through contractors and full-time employees that are actively affiliate owners, mm-hmm. right? So that is, a, that is a good data set that we can use to pull from, from a hundred and call it 20 countries. Right. Um, so we do, we do use their inputs uh, to help guide us. And that was okay. uh, candidly what, what uh, inspired the, the playbook. Sure. So I guess I misunderstood what you were. I listened to the the recent Two Brain podcast you did, and yeah. I thought that you said that you had people pulling data in all different places. Maybe I misunderstood that. But so, what do you have a guess as to what the average affiliate is making annually? And the reason we, why I ask before before you jump into it is, yeah, I think that it's a reasonable thing for people to know before they decide if they want to affiliate. You know, and and sure, go on. Yeah, so so we have a data and analytics department, but robust, I think, is is uh, is incorrectly yeah just d- describing <laughs> it. We, we, yeah, we you know you, you you've got to remember we you know I as an example came into this department. I had six uh, country managers um, and affiliate support team, um, incredibly hardworking group. Now there's eighty, right? So we've had mm-hmm. to build uh, teams over the over the past, and, and data analytics was a department that didn't exi- exist, and so. Um, we have a chief uh, analytics and data uh, officer um, that has come in and, and started to build that, uh, you know, that arm. Um, Austin, yeah. if you want to kind of speak to the profitability over the course of a year, um, and, and yeah, and then we can riff off that. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I mean, so Sean, to your to your question of one, we're we're working on getting more of that data now from our affiliates by. You know whether it's in the anecdotal stuff, but also through surveys and things of that nature, is to start to dig in. The hardest thing about this is that to highlight Gary's point is we have we have no access to any type of that that information from the affiliate, um, and this historically speaking, which is the majority of our affiliates, it's um, you know 
that that conversation has never even started, right? It wasn't even a thought process for home off for CrossFit to ask those types of questions or to dig into that. And but to what you're saying is that you know our goal, and and that's it's really on our roadmap um, for this year is to help potential affiliate owners guide them to making smart business decisions and helping them open up the business with a, a well thought out plan. The playbook was step one to say into that, you know, develop this foundational understanding really from opening through operational and everything in between. You know, we look at that as like sort of like the level one manual that you get at your level one. This is the, you know, the, our, our playbook for being an affiliate this year. Um, at, our goal is to really build out a, a whole business resource suite and a focus of that. And our first focus will be for new affiliates. And walk, you know, and helping them build that business plan, create that PL, understand their expenses, understand what needs to happen in order for their business to be profitable. And there's a lot of dependencies there, location, all of those things, and, and in turn, helping them along the way if they want. And I think that's another thing is that the, if they want, because that will always be to that point. And I like, you know, that word used is the, the rugged sort of, you know, um, you know, CrossFit, you know, community that we always have to say, if you still want to do this, the information's here, but our hand is out, grab it if you want. But um, we want to be able to offer as much help and support along the way. So, you know, with that would be creating the business plan and creating, you know, letting them understand, hey, this is what you need to, you know, hit these certain numbers. And, and what and does this work for your life and your lifestyle and your goals? Um, you know, a, you know, a lot of the conversation will start is, you know, as, as we were walking through um, how this begins is what are your goals, right? Is this just, uh, is this going to be, be your life or is this a side project? Are you going to be an owner investor and owner operator? There's so many things, but just having those conversations up front, these are things that have never happened in the past that we're going to be able to usher through in, in that business resource. So, um, Getting data along the way, which is we, you know, to, we are we will accumulate over time, and that's the goal to get an understanding of our ecosystem. Where right now, yeah, I mean, I've traveled around the world, been to a lot of gyms, as have you, and and working with so many gyms, you have your understanding. But it, it's going to be nice to be able to really have some pretty concrete data as we can get that. Um, but you know, so I, I know it was a, a non-specific answer, but hopefully that gives an idea of what our goals are to help support and guide the potential affiliate owner. Well, I think what you, I think what you basically said, and if I can encapsulate it is we don't have clear data because we've never demanded it of anybody. It's part of kind of what CrossFit is. Um, mm -hmm. But you're acknowledging that gyms could use some business support. And so you're building out the tools to provide it to them going forward. Yeah. hundred percent. I, th I think that's reasonable. I, I, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I heard you talk about on another podcast that I actually, if I can speak to and maybe shoot myself in the foot, think is a mistake is the inclusiveness of out trying to create an opportunity for everybody to share in the pie of developing CrossFit gyms. And I think there's nobody better to develop CrossFit gyms than CrossFit. And if you want to run a great CrossFit gym, I believe that there should be resources from home office that cost more than your affiliate fee to access because frankly, they're going to cost home office more money than your affiliate fee to service. But I, I think that um, if I was still an affiliate owner, which I'm not, I would, I would want that support from home office, not from a third party vendor who's trying to help me build the best version of something that there are 300 plus affiliate owners working inside of who should have successful gyms. Just my two cents. Yeah. I mean but you also agree that in order to get to that target condition that you just defined, you need to take steps. Yes. So, yeah. So, so, so that's what we're doing, right? We've only been at this for a year and a half um, and identifying, you know, key partners in, in the industry that have mm -hmm. helped these gyms, uh, you know, get to the point that they're at um, and trying to leverage our brand and create an opportunity for preferred pricing was, was a first step in that, you know, obviously I'd love to sit here and tell you that we've got gym software coming. We've, we're going to, you know, do, uh, we're going to create, um, uh, we're going to work with three PLs and have distribution for core amenities. Um, but that's, that's not a reality right now. Right. But, no, but I, it is, I, you know, it's a, it's a North star, right? I, so I understand. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure that I shared with you that I thought that, um, as somebody who was an affiliate paying the top affiliate yeah. fee that there was, 
Um, yep. It's something that I would have found valuable and I would have paid extra money for if it came from yeah. people at CrossFit who I trusted. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not speaking on behalf of anybody except myself. I'm yeah. just sharing with you what my experience would have been. Yeah. And, and, and I think it is worth mentioning um, about 90% of our portfolio pays the top license fee, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. It, I, yeah. I, know, I, I got mine in 2011, which is when it basically started. And I think everyone said right. after that. That's right. So That's right. It was, it was all me. I built the whole it thing. Was I, signed, I signed That's up right. and everybody else is like, I'm going to do this next. Yeah. Uh, so and, so I, and, go ahead, Austin. Well, I just, and, and to that, I, and, and I, and I think that we, we're in agreement there that our North star is to be able to do that and like deliver, you know, we want, you know, deliver to our affiliates, all of these resources, you know, designed and built and, and disseminated by CrossFit. I think a, a for, you know, for us is how do we take those steps? How do we scale and operationalize, you know, around the world? There's a lot of those, you know, there's just a, a lot of complexities with that. And, and then picking and choosing, you know, how we, how we do that appropriately. It's, um, it's, you know, and, and, and cap is a good example. Um, and I'll, I use cap as an example, cause it's a way for us to actually do that. Um, in a way that can scale because things have been set, you know, that, that ecosystem of programming is, is relatively understood and received where mm-hmm. we can have the best trainers in our mind, right. Uh, you know, with, with the cross seminar staff and those trainers work on this, develop content, put it together and have it available for every gym in the world. And, yeah. and that's, and then, and, th- and really in turn, having a coaching development tool. And I think that's a really good expression of a, one of what we're trying to do across all resources, programming, just being a good highlight of that. Yeah. So, but I, I would add quickly, sorry, Sean, this is important that we'll never, you know, obviously mandate, right. That would, that would mm-hmm. be franchise. Um, but we may not have all the answers and we know that, and there are, are some incredibly talented people in this ecosystem that have stood up incredibly powerful and effective businesses. We will always support that. That is the power of CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we will always have a preferred, uh, or a, affiliate partnership network. Um, it may include our own, uh, uh, internal solution, right. For that, for that business need that they're trying, uh, to, to navigate, but we'll always support and empower, uh, the affiliate owners and, and, and uh, individuals in the, in the industry that, that have stood up businesses. I, and, and I give you the latitude of being in the middle of a process. When I say yeah. this, I think that um, unfortunately, much of the way that CrossFit has gone in the past has propped up businesses outside of CrossFit who are yeah. making a ton of money where the yeah. affiliates are left, not making very much at all. And the coaches sure. are not making very much at all either. Yeah. And, and so yeah, I think and, and I, it would yep, be great I, to see that flip where, where everything is going back into the affiliates. And I don't know that the, the, the partner network is, is the trick, but, but again, in the spirit of, of, of us, uh, slow playing, right. This is a it's chipper, a not, yep. not, not an imam. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- this is our first attempt. And when you look at the agreements for a majority, if not all of those partners in there, we got very little, very mm-hmm. little. Everything that we were able to, to take, um, all those points were passed on to the affiliate. And so it may not directly put revenue into the, into the pocket of the affiliates with the exception of uh, some that have a wholesale, um, a wholesale option, um, mm-hmm. but it, it lowers their overhead, which in Gary, turn puts you, money, in, in their, t- money in their pocket. If you hit 10 singles in a row, you're going to score a lot of runs. I'm not looking sure. for you to hit home yeah. runs on everything you swing at. Yeah. So, no, so I I'm, yeah. I'm with you and, and I'm not. You know, I hope that it's not coming across as though I'm disparaging it. I think it's a good yeah. thing. I'm just, I'm just yeah. speaking to the greater. We're both in agreement, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're, we're we're both in agreement. So one of the things that you talked about was um, the having having great affiliate owners who are doing these things and building out the cap. And I think cap is great for people who don't know. It's the CrossFit affiliate uh, programming, right? And basically, what that is is if you own an affiliate or you work in a gym. The hardest thing to one of the hardest things to do is write program design that the members like, that's safe, that gets them fit, and that doesn't have somebody saying to you, "We're not doing enough muscle ups." And so, getting program design from home office and paying a reasonable amount for it—I've seen it. It comes with lesson plans, and it's it's good, and it's not perfect, and it will be better every single month. I imagine that it comes out. Uh, I think it's a very good offer that CrossFit is making to the CrossFit community. So I think that's a feather in your cap offering that. I also think the playbook is a big feather in your cap. You mentioned it before. 
the idea that people have a place where they can go and they can look and say, oh, this is what CrossFit believes best practices as is compared to this is what Active Life would say. This is what Mad Lab would say. This is what you know someone else would say. I think that's great. So I uh, credit to you guys. That's awesome. We, we appreciate it. That, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, a lot, a lot of hard work went into that, you know, Austin, um, being very involved in both of those areas. So we appreciate mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's, uh, it's something that is easy to overlook when you're on the ground and you're still like, it's not the thing that yeah. <laughs> it took you from making a hundred thousand right. dollars a year top line revenue to five, right. but right. it's, it's, these are, these are baby steps. And I, I want to give you credit because I think you did a good job with them. And I think that you'll continue to improve them. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Thanks. I have a question that is specifically from an affiliate owner that isn't, you know, it, it, I think it's a common problem that affiliates face. And I want to just read it verbatim the way he wrote it. If you need clarification, I'm free to, to, to Perfect. interpret. Great. He said, what would you say to the long-term affiliate owner who appreciates and embraces large elements of CrossFit as a fitness, as a fitness methodology, but has major issues being associated with other CrossFit gyms in terms of the way that they use that methodology or run their business model? Austin, do you want to? Yeah, no, it's, um, uh, I think, so obviously this is, you know, hear this question a lot, right? Over the, you know, and, and from all affiliate owners and this notion of quality control and this notion of, you know, it, this, the question comes in a few different flavors, right? So as the affiliate owner, what are you doing to up the, uh, the level of the other gyms in the area? Um, or what are you doing to, you know, deal with gyms that might not be at the level that, you know, one would like, or, or, uh, you know, said baseline. And I think there's a, there, it, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult answer to answer concisely. Cause I think there's a lot of ways to look at it. One, there's a, there's a beauty to the license agreement. And there's also the other side of it. the license agreement allows you to run, run your business, how you see fit with that. There's freedom in there and there's freedom for, for gyms to excel and do really well and thrive. And, and, other, and also there might be way, you know, you, you walk into a gym and say, there's a lot of inefficiencies or things that could be done better. And that, that is a, you know, there is a necessary, there's a necessary evil to that in, in that, in that notion. It also means that these gyms have the opportunity to grow and get better. Right. And, and, and that, that's where, and I think that's really what the, the angle that we're, that we are taking <laughs> is, you know, where, when we think about our role in this and in, in years past, it's always been cream will rise to the top. If you're not good, your business will not last and you will, and, and you'll die. Right. I mean, that's, that was sort of, I mean, that was, that was the notion that Greg always spoke about. And, but now our, our goal is to provide resources to help support and to, to give resources that are so compelling that can at least bring, you know, the playbook is a good example. Hey, read that playbook and there's got to be something in it or make your business a little better, a little stronger that can help. Cap, we're not going to force you to do this, but here's some programming that can really help. And we and, and if you're following this, your gym should, you know, at least from a programmatic perspective and some coaching development tools, put you on the right path to get better. Well, Austin, Austin if I can, if I can kind of run with you here for a second and then throw yeah. it back to you. It, you're following the Domino's principle, which is Domino's doesn't force a Domino's franchise to buy the cheese, to buy the dough, to buy the sauce, to buy the pepperoni, but they make it so much easier for all the franchises to buy all the stuff that they would rather buy the stuff than buy something off market. And I think that that's, that's smart. And I think that that's good. And even if without yeah. being a franchise doing that makes it easier for people, it's the carrot instead of the stick. Right. I don't think it answers the question though, of what does the, affiliate who's taking their business very seriously, who's feeding their family with it do when there's a gym that is perhaps in the same town Mm -hmm. that is doing energy exchange with all of the coaches, they're hoppering their workouts every single day and people are associating the two with each other and they're not similar at all. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think, you know, the, the short answer with that is there's a, and I tell people when they walk into the gym, what makes your gym different than others, right? We get this question a lot, right? I have five gyms in my town. Well, go to them all and see which one that you feel comfortable at, right? Which one that you enjoy? Which one do you feel that it's your community? Because the reality is we can't do, well, and, and we at, at home office are not able to, you know, go into that gym and tell them that, hey, we you can't operate this way, 
right? Because that's that's we're, we're that's against that what how we operate. Well, well, but, but is, isn't isn't that only because of how stringent the licensing agreement is? I mean, and and correct me if I'm mistaken, uh, and I'm happy to be wrong. Yeah. My understanding is that um, there are levels to which you can require things of a licensee, and there are levels, and you have choices before it becomes a franchise. And to cross its credit or cross its detriment, depending on how you look at it, it's been libertarianism since Glassman was running it from the very beginning. And so it's been very hands off. Here's the name, do what you want. Like you could theoretically own a CrossFit gym and it just be a bar with a mirror and a wood floor. And you can call it CrossFit. When I say a bar, I mean a ballet bar. Yes. You wouldn't, but you could. So um, all I'm asking you I guess there is, is it a choice that CrossFit wants to allow people to be variably so different that one gym in town can't identify as different than another unless someone walks in? And is yeah. that something that you want to keep? Yeah. Let me, so let me, let me try and, and, and answer this. So, uh, you know, Austin said it, th this question comes up quite a bit um, and it's a really tricky one to navigate. Um, I hear you, Sean, right? I think the um, different experiences in a gym are are blessing also can be our curse. Mm -hmm. And um, one person walking into a gym that's not operating effectively, the coaching may not be where it's at, an injury occurs, That's that may be the first and last time they ever walk into a CrossFit gym, right? Yes. Um, and, 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 you know, uh, 100 meters down the street, there's another gym that does it the right way. Um, and that, that affects them. Um, the, the license agreement uh, allows us, doesn't allow us to, to uh, you know, institute standard operating procedures right across the portfolio but what we do have is the ability to provide products that double click and really um focus on coaching development like cap right and the more gyms that are on cap the more we know are using how we view a properly coached class right so so, so that indirect let me yeah there's a couple things sorry. that i just want to touch on mm -hmm. so so we indirectly are helping provide an experience that we think is one that crossfit name should be standing behind. Um, another example is we have credentials, right? And you can take your L1, your L2, your L3, um, and, and, and what will be a revamped L4. Um, we have never identified coaches within the affiliates that have those credentials, right? And as you up-level yourself uh, in, in, in our education department, um, on a parallel path, your skill level um, is up leveled, right? There's obviously uh, situations where that doesn't happen. Um, but just like any continuing education course, you're gaining knowledge and experience within the craft that you're trying to, um, mm -hmm. to become an expert in. And so if we have an affiliate map and we have the ability to then post what the coaches have in terms of credentials, we can differentiate, right? So if the gym down the street is doing it the right way, they have two L2s, an L3 and an L4. Um, versus the, the other gym down the street that has two L1s, our consumers, our drop-in members will know that, or the members of the community will know that. And that indirectly will help people funnel towards the gym that have invested in their coaches from a development standpoint. Those are creative ways we can get um, and not tip over into the franchise law. Um, and candidly, something that we should be doing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as, as, a, um, as a licensor. Yeah, I think... Providing transparency to the person who's looking to join and explaining what it means that you have a level one coach, a level two coach, a level three coach, a level four coach in this gym yep. is, is valuable. And I think it's smart. Um, how efficacious do you believe that the level one is at making someone who can safely and effectively run the group class? Um, you know, as much as I'd love to answer that, I, you know, we probably stick towards gym operations, right? I, I think Nicole Carroll and her team would probably be best to answer, uh, you know, okay, stuff that's involving fair. education the, and the, training. The reason why I was asking is only because it affects the affiliates and it affects the market that I believe is yeah. coming in, but I, I respect yeah. your, your wanting to throw it at somebody else. Yeah. So let's talk about community because you, you mentioned community. Yep. Um, I'd like to share with you an experience that I think many gym owners have had and get your take on how to resolve it. And I want to, I want to be clear, not every gym owner has this experience, but it's one that I think Austin, you would, you would probably say you hear a lot when you go around to gyms to gym, they open their gym with a price that is that they believed was appropriate based on a number that they probably pulled out of the air. 
they looked at other gyms in the area and said, okay, they're charging this yep. without asking, are you successful? Are you profitable? Mm-hmm. And then they charge something a little bit more or a little bit less. And then members started to join the gym with the ask of, am I going to be able to lose weight here, get jacked here, be athletic here, all these things. They never asked about community. They asked about fitness. And mm-hmm. the answer was, yes, of course you are. And then what happens is for some of those people, they achieve those goals. For some of those people, they don't. And no, mm-hmm. no model can promise that to everybody. So I'm not holding you accountable to some people not getting to their goals. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, some people hit their goals. Some people don't. The ones who do oftentimes are not getting a meeting with a coach to set the goal after the goal. It's just like, all right, I'm, I'm generally yeah. fitter. I can say I'm generally fitter. Yeah. Um, and then the gym owner looks around at the gym and says, I'm not making any money here. And I can't pay my coaches who are also very kind of transient, making 20 bucks, 25 bucks a class. So they're not totally dedicated to be great. And so I need to charge more in order to improve the gym and make the programming better and make the coaches better. But the members have stopped looking at the results that they were getting from the gym as the value that they signed up for. And they've now transitioned to looking at the community as the value. And they don't necessarily value the community at a greater price than what they're currently paying. Sure. And the rate goes up, they look at the community and they say, wait, if you raise the rates, John isn't going to be able to afford coming to the gym anymore, which means you're fracturing our community, which means you're just in it for the money. And then gym owners don't raise the rates and they find themselves in this unfortunate situation where ownership or coaching in a gym is martyrdom. And it's mm-hmm. like, I don't do this for the money. I do it because I love fitness. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. You didn't get into fitness to get rich, but you didn't get into fitness to be poor either. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm curious. Well, that's quite that. the scenario. So I just want to make sure I got all, I got all of the, yeah. the, the different aspects. Um, I would respectfully disagree with you that people don't look for community. Um, and it's, it's strictly fitness uh, driven. Okay. Um, you know, soul cycle as an example, similar uh, following uh, different type of uh, persona, but a similar following where, where people are really, um, focused on, on community. And, and, and so I would say CrossFit's the same thing. Um, member growth traditionally is done through word of mouth. Word of mouth, um, is not powerful unless the community is, is fueling that in, in my opinion. Right. And, and I may be off, but I do think a majority of the members join to, to find something, um, outside of what they already have in terms of community. And Oh, by the way, get extremely fit along the way. Um, so, so I do think community plays a, an, an important role in it. Um, in terms of uh, having to, so, so I, I want to take a step back. Um, you know, you you had said how can gym owners talk about raising rates when you know CrossFit Home Office hasn't done it? We actually talk through uh, uh, how do we feel you should approach. Uh, not we, the affiliate owners that built the playbook, feel you should approach raising rates in the playbook. So we we talk about it. Um, and, and we acknowledge it and, and we think you should take advantage of it, right? The, 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 the you know, cost of doing business is, is increasing. So you should follow that with, with your prices. Um, so, so just so I'm following you, you said somebody comes in, they had a fitness goal. Um, I, can, I, can, I can make it really simple. So I don't okay, go through okay. all the steps. I just, okay. I've, I've asked a bunch of affiliate owners. Sure. Was this your experience and landed on basically that was the one that they were like, yep, that's it. Do it. Okay. Um, and so what I'm asking is. When the community becomes more important than the fitness, yeah, does the gym become less valuable and therefore harder to raise rates for? Yeah, I think I think that's an easy no. Okay. I, yeah, I I, I I I think that's really not um, an issue. I, and the reason I say that is because if you're getting to a point where you're um, marginalizing or or um, taking the the fitness aspect for granted. There's a lot of inputs that have gotten you there uh, outside of community being the number one driver, in my for opinion. Sure. For sure. And, and so let's, let's, let's reverse engineer it. What, what happened for you to get to a place where you're really focused on what community? What, so what does community even mean? How are you defining? And is it what you do outside of the gym? Is it the camaraderie inside the gym? I mean, there's so many different aspects of community. Is it you serving the community? Um, you know, at, at a nonprofit is what, like, what is, what is the community example that you're referring to in terms of people focusing on that over fitness? Well, it's, it's the word that you used and it's the word the CrossFit has been using for a long time. So yeah. I'm just using it back. Got to, it. What, what I, what Got I it. would describe it as is all of the things social around the gym that yeah. are not 
that are not oriented towards somebody coming in and improving themselves intentionally in a specific sure. direction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, so, and, and, and yeah. the way, the way I would describe it is community is important. Um, if it's driven by culture, I think if community drives culture, as opposed to culture driving community, we have a problem. And I think that uh, orthopedics offices do just fine without community. Physical therapy offices fine without community. Personal training departments in commercial gyms do fine without community. So I don't, I I disagree with you and that's okay. The community is essential. I'm just curious as to when you believe, if you believe it becomes something that can actually hold the business back. I I, I don't think, I, I actually do not think it can hold the business back. And again, if um, I'd, I'd love to talk to the affiliate owners that feel that that has been a contributor to, to them having to increase rates. Um, my gut tells me that if we did break it down, there would be other um, other inputs, as I said earlier, that that have gotten them there. Uh, and you know, is it staffing? Um, are they instead of uh, being able to lead um, and and not coach classes, have they been forced to coach classes, which then takes away from uh, their ability to 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 drive uh, you know the right ex- uh, experience and um, culture in the gym. Like I mean, there's a lot of questions that I think I I would want to ask before I'd give my perspective on that in detail. But at a high level, I don't think community or focusing on it impacts your ability to run a effective business and therefore okay. requiring you to increase rates. I would I would urge you to ask the question to to as many to as many people as you can, okay. and you might find something very different than I did. You might okay. find exactly the same thing. Yeah. You, you mentioned coaches being able to create space for themselves. And Austin, if you have something to add, on, please feel free to jump back in in just one second. Yeah. Do you think that gym owners have the responsibility of creating career paths for the coaches who work in their gym? Um, I, I think it should be a partnership. What does that is, mean? Is, is, is my answer. So we should create curriculum uh, and we should help create you know, templates and what that actually looks like. Right. And, and again, this is a uh, country specific conversation because there are laws. Mm-hmm. US. Um, uh, yeah. Right. U S um, I, I think we should help, uh, help prepare our gym owners on what it looks like to provide a, an effective career uh, for the coaches that are within their gym um, and what other opportunities they have to generate revenue um, and, or bring other revenue streams into the gym. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think it's a partnership. And, but listen, we can create the roadmap. It's got to be executed on the ground, 100%. right? And and so, um, but yeah, it, it's a, it's a partnership, and 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 I think we've outlined that in the playbook. We'll double click on that on the resources we have in the, coming in 2022. Um, but uh, you know, career progression um, is incredibly important for employee development and buy-in. Um, and if you're going to have an incredibly strong culture inside the gym, you need buy-in, right? Mm-hmm. And I think the hardest part of leadership is looking at a team that is an extension of you when you are not in front of them. And how do you accomplish that? You accomplish that by having people that are bought in, that feel like their career um, is progressing with everything mm-hmm. they're doing. And so as, as a home office, we're committed to providing the, the, the template um, that you can leverage or not to try and up-level your coaches and help them get to the goals that they want. If I can urge you at all, if my influence means anything, and maybe it doesn't, and that's totally fine. I'm just some guy you're talking to on a podcast, and I respect that. Um, I would urge you to try to create a culture in which gym owners understand that the value of their gym is the coaches and without creating meaningful careers or career opportunities that those coaches can earn. And when I say career opportunities, I mean, they can afford to live on their own and pay their overhead for the the place they live in with less than 30% of their income. Yep. Um, that's the fastest way to gym ownership success is creating. Yeah, we're on the same page there, man. Okay. And yeah, yeah we're 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 one hundred percent on the same page. I would love to see more of that coming from from. Home yeah, office. and I, and I, you know Nicole and her team have some really powerful stuff coming out. Uh, and 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 you know one of the things that I think has been really cool over the past year and a half is um, the cross functional collaboration between the the departments, right? And and really complementing each other with the products that we have coming out. Um, and, uh, and so Nicole and I work so close, um, on, on the stuff that's coming out of EDU and vice versa, right? Because our, our businesses are dependent on each other. Um, and you know, top affiliates have great coaches, great coaches mm-hmm. are invested, they're developed, um, and they see a future professionally within the affiliates that they work in. So I agree with you. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. And to, love to hear that. and to build on that, something that's not lost on us. And it's, it's, at, it's something that is our, the ecosystem of affiliates, because what's, what's it's as, it, as you know, as an a previous affiliate owner, and same with myself is 
your business is built up of all different types of coaches in different points in their career. And so you're going to have full-time staff, you'll have part-time and then you'll have sort of the, uh, you know, the, the reliever or, you know, know, on, on your staff. And, but how do we help connect gyms to, you know, get other staff to, uh, you know, for, a lot of us, when we first started, gosh, when I first started, I would coach at three or four different gyms in an area to get get hours, to shadow, to learn, you know. So creating a, a network for coaches to, uh, you know, look at gyms that are looking for help, and for gyms to to, to look for that, um, and to like, hey, we're we need we need support. Here are some hours that we need support on, you know, because we do have a, a a very powerful community within communities. Just I, I'm in the greater Boston area. There's a lot of affiliates. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of coaches. How do we make it easier on those coaches to connect with those affiliates and vice versa uh, and vice versa? So because that's that's how we help career progression, right? Where is to give opportunity for them and and to give them the opportunity to, you know, in the beginning, maybe it's coaching at a few different places. Um, so- and 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 so that's that's something that because not every gym is going to be able to provide ev- everyone that walks in their door this a full-time position with growth, right? Cause these are small businesses that mm-hmm. do have ceilings, but it's nice to have someone start level set with them. And I, and, and I just think about when I would bring people and it's like, Hey, you know, this is the, the state of our business and this is the state of this role and being clear. So then knowing where, where, where they're, where they can start to understand what the next year or two of their life will look like. If I can, if I can give my two cents on that, um, I don't necessarily see eye to eye with you on the idea of having full timers, relievers, and the the spot people here. Because if I'm an athlete in a class, I don't want somebody who's doing this as a hobby with my physiology under their purview. That that's my own personal perspective, right. and I I own it. Um, I think that the best way that you can do what you just described, if I was still an affiliate owner, is make it so that affiliates in the same town want to have conversations with each other, as opposed to we're this one big community. As long as you're not less than five miles away from me. Which, which that's is what fair. That's fair. To, yeah. Um, Cause I would be happy to send a coach from my gym to another gym. If that other gym and I were, were friends and right. I own that when I own gyms, uh, I had a tendency to, bit of, to be a bit of an asshole from time to time. And so I own some of that myself, but I don't <laughs> think that my experience was so unique. I think that, yeah, I, you know, I listen, I, that, that's fair. And I think um, one of, and when I said it's a partnership, one of the ways that we can help support, you know, that collaboration is by providing a hiring network, mm-hmm. right? That centrally ran, um, yep. that identifies the L1s in our communities um, and helps them funnel to the gyms, right? Yep. And so you have this feeder system of coaches that want to get into the business. Um, and, and, and a lot of the reason why you won't let a coach go or you're fearful of letting a coach go, um, from what I've heard, is because you can't replace that person, right? Mm-hmm. And so we need to do a better job taking advantage of the hundreds of thousands of people that have taken the L1 and helping them become employed, right? Yeah, I think I think if there's a career path to making meaningful in- income, they would do it. Right. Uh, I have one more question that um, I'm just I'm personally curious the answer to, and then I want to make sure that I give an opportunity to share anything that we haven't talked about. Um, and that is um, on the last podcast I listened to you, Gary. You were talking about, and the reason why this is relevant for affiliates is because it goes down to um, how much can they take CrossFit at their word on things, right? Yep. And so you were talking about. CrossFit will be extremely discerning about who you partner with and less discerning perhaps about who you let sponsor. And if, if I understood correctly, and I want to start by saying, I think it would be totally reasonable for you to allow Coca-Cola, Budweiser, McDonald's, and Monsanto to sponsor the CrossFit games and to say, these companies paid us money so that we could put this event on for you. And that's our relationship with them. I think that would be totally reasonable. I don't think anybody should have a problem with that. It's when you've owned a business, it's where am I going to get a few million dollars from to support this huge event that doesn't make us any profit? Those people want to pay for it. That's fine. We're not telling you to take their product, but they're paying for it and you're going to know about it. One thing that I will say personally, I did have a problem with was putting water in Monster Energy cans at the finish line to create a photo op for monster energy that was disingenuous because athletes weren't actually drinking monster energy. My concern is the, the image of saying one thing and doing another. And I, I would love to hear your perspective on that. Yeah. You're, listen, you're not in the minority there, right? And that, and that includes myself. 
you know, that, that what I'm um, able to, to know in terms of partnership, or I should say sponsorships of the games is very limited, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was, uh, you know, I'd been with the company for, for six months. Um, and, and so uh, that, that was kind of a surprise to me. Um, I think one thing is we're not perfect, right? We're, we're finding that out. We've made bets um, <laughs> just, that just we've had to out. pull back. Yeah, yeah, that, that we've had to pull back, and 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 we're we're humble um, in in knowing that. Um, yeah, I, I didn't love that either. You know, I'm not I'm not mm -hmm. going to sit here and say give you some corporate line that says you know well that was within the terms and agreements of the sponsorship for order for us to access the money we had to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know we we need to learn from stuff that we've done in the past, whether or not we do. Um, you know, is is another question. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of that either. That's the most refreshing so. answer I've heard somebody at CrossFit give to any question on any podcast in a long time. Well, th oh, thanks, man. And I, I told you, I, I, um, I, I won't hold back, even if it's, <laughs> you know, something mm -hmm. that I'll have to answer to later. Well, uh, look, but I'm, I, but I'm, a, I, yeah, I'm a very principled person. And, I, re I, so. res I respect you. I respect that answer. I respect Austin. It's why I wanted to have this interview. And yeah. I think that that's, that's extremely, uh, for me, at least, refreshing. And I know that I don't necessarily um, represent the CrossFit community. I certainly don't represent the CrossFit yep. community. But as a human who wants to see CrossFit do well, even if I'm not participating in it, um, that's a refreshing answer. Yep. So I appreciate okay. you saying it. Um, I would love to give you an opportunity to talk about a lot of the things that CrossFit is doing that are improving affiliates and their opportunity to earn careers running a gym and do a good job for their clients. You have things like the round tables, you have things like cap, you have things like the affiliate uh, playbook. And I would love for you to share your perspective on what those things are, how they can help people, what, whatever people need to know about what you're doing at CrossFit to improve the client experience. Yeah. I'll let Austin speak on detail on, on the products, but um, you know, I've said this on, on a number of podcasts before, but I think it's worth mentioning now. Um, you know, when I came into the role, uh, what I define success as um, is, is being an unquestioned business partner of the affiliate. And, and we still have work to do to get there. Um, but the products and initiatives that we resource, that we prioritize, all have that as our guiding principle. Like, how can the affiliate owner look at us as a, as a partner and, and somebody that helps them uh, deliver an extremely powerful product? Um, and allow them to make a living. And so all the products you just mentioned um, stay true to that. And, and we have had a number of products that we have sunsetted because um, you know they, they don't necessarily hit that mark. And so I don't know, Austin, if you want to speak to the specifics and kind of how we went through that thought process to roll out um, in, in the order that we did. If, if yeah. it's okay, Austin, just right yeah, before you do, because Gary says something that I wanted to, <laughs> to yeah, 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 respond. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, what I'm seeing from CrossFit, from yeah. the outside looking in, and, and you can tell me that I'm whatever, wrong, right, nothing. When I owned gyms, I was in my late 20s and early 30s. Mm -hmm. And I was a very immature business owner. Mm -hmm. And I probably would have looked at what you were doing and said, they're trying to go left wing. They're trying to go corporate. They're trying to yeah. go say the right thing all the time, do the right thing all the yeah. time. Yeah. And I believe that in my... I understand why I think a lot of CrossFit affiliate owners would still feel that way today. Yeah. And my thought personally is that it's actually, you're doing the things to finally try yeah. to standardize the experience and professionalize the brand. And I have respect for that. Yeah. What I think what I think you're going to face and what I think you're seeing right now after the Dave Castro decision and things like that, which we don't mm -hmm. need to talk about. We is, can. Okay. Is, um, People within the community who, in that case, say, I identify more, though, Gary, with the Dave Castro persona sure. than I do with the Gary Gaines, Eric Rosa, Austin Maliolo persona. Yep. And if you're firing that guy, does that mean that the affiliate yeah. owner who you're actually talking about, who you want to be a partner with, yep. isn't me? And I think, yeah. I think that's what you're seeing right now. And I'm yeah. So, 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 so thank you for saying that. So let me just comment on, on a couple things. Um, I left that corporate world because it no longer suited me, right? I, I, I have operated a business that is consistent globally when you walk through the door. Um, 
And there's a reason why I'm here because I, I don't want that life. I don't want to manage that business. Um, and, and I want to, uh, continue to uplift something I'm extremely passionate about. You're exactly right in saying what we're trying to do is match the passion that these gym owners have for fitness, for changing lives with business acumen. If we can do that, we're the most powerful company in the world. I truly believe that. Um, and then in terms of the products that we're producing being commercial or commercializing or commoditizing the brand. My response to you is I can confidently say that every product that you have has been created by affiliate owners for affiliate owners. The playbook, as an example, the first meeting we had to discuss the playbook was 12 of our top business owners that were not employed um, by CrossFit in the United States. You had Craig Howard from Diablo. You had Nicole Christensen from Roots. You had um, Sherman Merricks from Dynasty in Florida. You had... um, uh, Adam Neifer from CrossFit Van- Fort Vancouver, CJ Martin from Invictus. These are affiliate owners that have bled, sweat, and cried for this community that have uh, navigated the most challenging business climate in order to create these businesses. They were the inspiration for the playbook, not us. We didn't look at some masterclass or pull from our previous experience of operating large businesses and say, they should use this as a best practice guide. Um, and, and you said... You know, you follow our our our, our uh, playbook, and you're going to have this standardized um, process, right? And and it'll up level the quality. We're we're not asking you to do that. What we're asking you to do is look at your business, see where you have opportunity, and if you find help within this playbook, use it. If you don't, don't. Right? Yeah. Tools over rules. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to provide a resource for you if you want to access it. And so, in terms of Dave symbolizing. Um, symbolizing, uh, you know, that, that the, the old um, entrepreneur uh, of pro- independent business owner um, controlling your old, old experience. Dave Castro is incredibly important to me. And I'll tell you why. When I came to CrossFit, I had a team that I needed to build. And like I'd mentioned before, I had six country managers that were in our top non-US markets. And I had an affiliate support team that handled inbound requests from affiliates. There was really nothing else uh, for, for the affiliates um, in terms of support. Um, and so I had a task to build an org, okay? The easy thing for me to do would have been to pull from Tesla, Lyft, SoulCycle, or Enterprise, because I've had people that I've battled with and been successful with in my past. I sat down and had a conversation with Dave, and I'm like, you've been in this community for a number of years. This is how I think I'm going to approach this. What are your thoughts? You're doing it all wrong. And what Dave taught me is that there are incredibly talented people within this business that have given their lives that deserve a shot. You look at my team, there's not one person that I hired outside of the CrossFit uh, ecosystem. Every single person has given their lives to this company, whether it be an affiliate owner, an athlete, seminar staff, um, or, or, or thir- a partner um, that, that has contributed. Um, and that's what Dave taught me. Although I can't speak about the why he was exited, I can speak to the obligation I have to maintain and continue to build what he created. And I'm committed to doing that. I think that's reasonable. I appreciate you speaking on it. No worries, man. So Austin, (laughs) we've, 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 uh, we've put a bunch of things before you got to say what you were going to say about those, uh, those products. I'd love to hear about it. Well, yeah, and I think I think a good place to 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 start, and I think honestly, our most important tool to what Gary just mentioned is is carrying this piece of of this culture, is our roundtables, and the roundtable is is a was created w- with the notion of how do we connect our affiliate owners together in a, in an intimate form so they can just share best practices, be there for each other, talk to each other, because we all know as gym owners, it's lonely in the gym sometimes. And, and you get, and, and you get stuck within your four walls and you kind of alluded to that. We all get to a point in our, in our career as a, as an owner, where we don't necessarily look outside those four walls. It's easy to be live in your own echo chamber. And so we created this opportunity to get eight affiliate owners together. They meet consistently across a, a, a six month period. And there's a moderator and you just create a safe space. And we have 2000 affiliates that are, are, are now a part of this. And the reason why I, I think this is such a powerful tool is because it's, it's just a place for people to be. And we've trained the moderators to create a safe space because that's important. And the 
this is a place where people let their guard down. They, 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 they can be humble. They can, and people just listen. They're not told to do things. They're not, you know, pr- problems aren't meant to be fixed. They're just meant to be heard. And that's, and that's very, very, a, a kind of almost 10 or 15 years ago, the old CrossFit message boards, uh, you know, and, and for a lot of the salty vets that, you know, that re- remember those things, that's where we all learned, like how to like hang a ring over, you know, and, and, and like for a muscle up, how to, what's a parallel, right. And it was very organic, but that's how we all got very close. And, and then a lot has grown and changed in, in the past 10 years or so. This is kind of bringing it back to that. And um, so the round tables is a, is a really a powerful tool to keep that culture and that community of CrossFit and the affiliate owner, but also making sure that we can learn from one another and share best practices. And that's where that, uh, that playbook comes into play of, you know, what are those best practices and having something to point to having actually something to, you know, like, like that price increase, we'll go to page 70 on the playbook and it talks about some best practices and Hey, as an eight year affiliate owner, I've struggled with, for, with this because I, we had a revolt. I wish I did this differently for the first year affiliate owner. And here are some things and point to something and Hey, we have a resource center in the, uh, in, in, in the playbook. So I actually put how I, my, my membership communication down for my, my two years of price increases, take it if you want, but I dumped it in the resource center for you. Right. So I think that, that to me, from a product perspective is really powerful because these are things that we, we've always talked about wanting to be able to do and how do you execute on it? Um, and, and, and dovetailing that into, I think we've talked a lot about cap. Don't need to re- rehash that, but I think for, the big thing as doing over 400 seminars the past 10 years, it's the number one question you get is about programming, about coaching development, you know, and, and and it's, and it, now it's an opportunity to say, Hey, try this out. You know, I, I I tell anyone, try cap out it, love it or hate it. It's something that, you know, where it's coming from. It's very, it's of the same red thread through our level ones, two and threes. Try it for a year when you're new, then go program on your own for a couple of years. That's, you know, that's how we all did. We followed dot com in 2007 and eight and for, for enough for us to think we knew what we were doing. Then we could go wreak some havoc programming on our own. Um, and then a couple of years later, we realized that's a lot. That's too much work uh, to do this. I'm going to you know ask someone else to do it for me um, that I trust. And, and, and to that point, trust. Um, the, the affiliate partner network was the APN is was the number one thing that people asked for. And I think it was like the last two years really made, I think our business owners, they had to become better business owners, right? It was, we had to look at the business and we had to look at expenses. We had to look at margins and because we were fighting for our lives, but, you know, and, and in turn, you know, you know, how do we at CrossFit leverage what we can do as CrossFit in our buying power and give opportunities for affiliates to, you know, access services and goods and things of that nature and make it easier on them. And that's where that came, that comes into play. I always get bagged on this because it's like, well, you know, I always go to our core amenities and everyone's like, well, you, it's toilet paper and, you know, and soap. But I'm like, well, as an affiliate owner, I never liked spending money on toilet paper and soap and mops, but I had to. And, you know, it's like one of those things that you don't really think about how often you have to clean the bathroom when you open up a business. Right. But you do that, two weeks later. Exactly. Right. And then every two weeks, right? And then and, and then and then you better have you know all of these things you you no one ever told you, uh, but so being able to offer those things, whether it's you know just hey like you know it's going to save you 50, 60 bucks a month, like that really adds up if you have you know a handful of things that you save fifty to sixty bucks on every month. These are things that really start to matter, um, and that's where that the, the um, affiliate partner network, network comes into play, and um, it really does help drive back to the playbook of like, well, are we actually analyzing our expenses, analyzing how that affects and how do we, how do we make, make, become a more efficient business? Oh, we can utilize this partner network to actually set actionable goals and achieve that. So it's, um, I like how everything is connected and, and it's, and it, it's just the start, but that's just a little expression of the tools that we're, that we, that we're offering to, to the community. And, and our goal is we hope it's received as, like you said, as help and support, as opposed to, you know, whoa, what is this? Don't talk to me. Don't tell me what to do. Cause you know, that's the contrarian nature, but you know, it's, you know, I, if there's one message we have for our affiliates, it's, Hey, a lot of affiliates put their, their, their time, blood, sweat, and tears into this because 
we all wished we had a lot of this when we first started or at any point in time through our career, our career as affiliate owners. And, um, and that's, that's the guiding light. I think you guys gave good answers to questions that people have. And, and, you know, I think that the, the reality of what our conversation was today, uh, I could probably talk to you for another two hours, especially if you would talk to me about coaching, but Mm -hmm. I I understand that that's not the conversation to have here. Uh, I have a lot of passion around that. And I think that, Austin knows we don't see all the things the same way on that front, but that's, that's fine. That's what makes horse races. And that's good. People shouldn't agree on everything. Right. I, I just, the last thing I'll say here, and if you want to add anything else, you're welcome to is um, more talk like that. You know, the, 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 the two, the last things that both of you guys said, like Gary, that was like, we're about to go on our two minute drill. You know, we're down by, we're down by three. And we don't have a choice. We got to get it across the goal line. Yeah, We're down by four. So three, we could kick a field goal, you know, all those details. But, um, and Austin, for you, it was, you know, that, that was, that was clear. It was, this is what we're trying to do. And I think that it's natural. Anybody who owns a business understands this and then maybe doesn't provide the latitude that is deserved for others. Things get hairy. (laughs) <laughs> like you try to do some stuff and it doesn't go the way you want it to do. If, if all you get for the rest of your life is judgment on that thing, you can't move forward. So I respect that you take some shots, you're missing, you send those things down, you try something new. And I don't think we'll ever agree on everything, but I, I was refreshed by the way you guys spoke. Yeah. And I, I, you know, really refreshed by your questions, Sean. Well, like I, you know, I think um, for, for us, you know, we've been immersed in, in, in trying to produce this stuff. Um, and, and, you know, waking up, the first thing we think about is how we can su- support our affiliate community. The last thing we think about before we go to bed and sometimes during, because <laughs> uh, my wife has told me that, you know, said some things uh, in my sleep, um, is, is how we can support this community. Um, but it's people like you that, that will make us better. I, you know, I, I truly believe that. And I'll never, ever turn down a conversation. Um, we, can, ever. We, can, we can have more because I can tell you in the past, it's been, it's kind of been like that America, love it or leave it. And I've always been like, yeah. no, 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 America, love it and give it feedback so it can get better. Uh, Frankly, CrossFit's always felt to me like the, if you have feedback that is, it needs to improve, get the fuck out. And yeah, that's, it's refreshing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that's, that's, that's not us. Uh, That that's not us. And and I, you know, some, I I say this to my team all the time, every few weeks, look yourself in the mirror, ask yourself what you need to improve on to be the best version of yourself. Um, And if you have an honest conversation, you're not going to like what you hear. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, this is, this is us self-reflecting and I've, I've taken notes on and, you know, I'm picking up the phone and calling Austin right after this. Um, cause, cause we need to continue to work. Right. And we've got people out there, um, that, you know, we're trying to do the same thing, right, Sean, we may get there a different way, but we're trying, we're trying to do the same thing. Um, and mm. so if, if you and I, like uh, us in terms of fitness and, 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 and helping improve people's lives, right. Like trying, trying to, to, um, you know, better the people we serve. Um, and, and so if we can continue to up level, um, then I think we're, we're, uh, you know, how, doing our part is, is what I'm trying to say. I'd love to chat with you about what we do because it's not exactly, we're not trying to do the same thing. And I think that we need what you do. And I believe that you need what we do. Yeah. But that's, 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 that's a full conversation. That is a long one. And I welcome it. I, I welcome it. Okay. Austin, right, Gary, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Take care. Appreciate it, Sean. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Active Life Podcast. Remember, if you feel inspired by our vision to humanize the healthcare industry, professionalize the fitness industry, and empower individuals to live their lives, to reclaim their physical freedom, to develop careers, helping people reclaim their physical freedom, all you need to do is head to activelifeprofessional.com Find the appropriate link that represents you and get in contact. We'll see you there. Turn pro.